Yay Networks. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. I'm your host, Deshauna Barber, and I'm so excited to welcome you guys back for another amazing episode. This episode is called Finding Love After Betrayal. Now, we always have to note that Sour Loss Sweet Lessons is all things self-care, self-love, and self-improvement. And I believe that relationships are a big part of who we are. They contribute to our self-esteem, sometimes in the worst ways. Uh, they can be very empowering situations, but they can also be deterring situations that pull you away from your destiny, but they can also be traumatic and completely destroying of your self-esteem. And that is exactly what happened to me through my years and years and years of being in relationships. And I was excited to talk about this particular topic because in a way I kind of wish that there was, and there may have been, and I didn't find anything, but it would have been nice after my heartbreak some years ago if I had had someone say, hey, I've been through something traumatic and tragic and something that really almost put me in a position of believing that beautiful, genuine love did not exist. And I wish that there was someone that was able to give me a nice run through of, okay, how do I not lose hope? And specifically, how can I trust again? For those that don't know, I have always had deep rooted trust issues within myself. A lot of the reasons is because I just have had so many bad run ins with men in particular, but especially just starting from childhood, being a survivor of child sexual abuse and having been violated in a way by someone that was a trusted male individual in my household or in the neighborhood per se that would come and visit my household. And for that to be my first real interaction with broken trust, as a kid, I feel like I've really carried that distaste and distrust for men all the way into adulthood. And it took so many years for me to be able to acknowledge that this is a trauma response and that I had to do some deep rooted healing. So as the years went on and I ran into more and more men that were breaking my trust, uh, hurting me, betraying me, all these things. Once Marvin came along, <laughs> I, I tell you, I didn't even know how to allow this type of love to enter my life. I did not know how to even trust and believe a person's word anymore. The concept of trust was something that I could, in, in a male point of view, I could only attach to someone like my father. Before Marvin, I, I really can say this in truth, my brothers and my father might have been the only men on the planet that I can say I deeply trust, like I trust them with my life. Those are the only men that I could, that I can really pinpoint as individuals that I can say I trust that are men. And I've always wondered why is that, Deshauna? Why, why do you have an issue with trusting? And I had to go through and really dig deep as to where this came from. And it was really my book that opened up that wound and reminded me, okay, so this is where this distrust is sourced from. It's really sourced from childhood and then my constant interactions and struggles throughout my adult life and my dating life, where I've run into so many individuals that have just lied to my face, betrayed me, and just all these things. So when Marvin came along, the only reason why I gave him a little bit of trust in the beginning was because of one of my best friends. And one of my best friends 
you know, Marvin and I met at my best friend's wedding. One of my best friend's wedding. So his, one of his best friends married one of my best friends. Okay. And we met at a wedding in 2017 and she vouched for him. She said, listen, he's a great guy. He's genuine. He's kind. He's sweet. He's smart. Um, he's very ambitious. And because I trusted her, I was able to trust him slightly. <laughs> he got a lot further in the trust arena than most would only because I trusted my best friend. And that speaks volumes of just how bad my trust issues were at the time. And I think about the first couple years and just how grateful I am <laughs> for his patience because I was a complete mess in this relationship, complete and utter mess. And I'll tell you all a little bit more after this break. Welcome back. Okay. I was a mess. <laughs> I was a complete mess. And I'm the type where if I feel like you're being sketchy, if I feel like you're doing something I don't quite believe, I'm going to tell you. And there were two instances in particular, which was within our first year of dating back in 2020, 2021 timeframe. And I remember he told me on a weekday that the next day he had to work a late shift. I automatically don't believe him. Okay. Because in my mind, you haven't worked any late shifts since we've been dating. Like, what do you mean you're, you're this late shift, you're an engineer, you know, how is that even possible? Late shift, late shift. And I questioned him about it. And he says, well, you know, within our company, sometimes we have, um, we have duty, engineering duty, but specifically when it comes to construction, you are see when you're driving down a highway and they're doing construction at one and two o'clock in the morning and you're like, why the heck are they doing construction at one, two o'clock in the morning on the highway? But you realize that's probably the best time because it's the least amount of traffic. That's what this situation was, but it was on a parking garage. And I remember saying to myself, this guy's a liar. Like he's not doing some type of engineering shift, but apparently engineers are still in the advisory position when it comes to construction workers. And I didn't know anything about it. I started Googling it. I started, you know, calling different friends. Like he said, he's going to be doing a shift tomorrow. I don't believe this guy. And I think after I told him about it, he did everything that he could to convince me that no, this is true. What he ended up just doing the next day is during his lunch, he ended up FaceTiming me while he was in the parking garage with some of his um, co-workers and some of the construction workers just to say hi, just to say hi. And this is probably at like 11 o'clock or something like that. And I remember thinking to myself, gosh, darn it. This guy is really at a shift at a construction area in a parking garage at 11 o'clock at night. He was telling the truth. And I remember feeling really bad. And I, I, he never actually came out to say, hey, I'm doing this because I want to prove to you that I'm actually here. But I know that he was doing it in the form of just being reassuring that I am where I say, I am where I'm saying I'm going to be. But I felt bad because in my mind, I should not always assume that someone is lying to me. And what's interesting is I spent years in therapy before this relationship. I have spent years in therapy. I thought I had already addressed all of these trust issues that I was experiencing. I thought that I was healed. And what I realized is that people say don't date until you're fully healed. I just don't think in my opinion, that there's a such thing as being fully healed. And here's why. When you get into a relationship with someone that you care about, they're automatically going to open certain doors of vulnerability that singleness did not open. And while you were healing in your single journey, there were certain doors that 
the therapist and you did not fully have access to experiencing. You're experiencing a trauma response and you're, you're trying to describe your experiences versus in a relationship, you're actually walking in the shoes of those experiences. And they are opening the doors of all of that trauma all over again. So what I had to do was one, I had to recognize, okay, I'm not fully healed. I don't know if there's a such thing as being fully healed. And I had to get back into therapy while me and him were together so that I could address those doors that this relationship was opening. And I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for my therapist because there were moments in which I had to describe to her something that I'm experiencing in real time. This is not something, hey, I need to heal from something that this guy did two years ago. This is, hey, I'm in love with this person. They don't deserve the way in which I'm treating them, but I'm having a reaction and a trigger to previous relationships. And I feel like I'm taking it out on them, but these are triggers that I did not even realize was there until me and him started dating. And now this has opened up a door of vulnerability that I did not know was there. So... I had to get myself to a point where I was not necessarily focused on how to necessarily trust Marvin, but how can I trust myself? That's what I had to struggle with. And most people know what I mean when I say this, that when you have spent so many years choosing the wrong partner, it's hard for you to fathom that you finally chose the right partner, right? So it's almost trusting your decision to be with this person. So I had to not only wrap my head fully around trusting him and trusting what he was saying, but trusting that I picked him and got into a relationship with him for a reason. I no longer trusted my intuition. I no longer trusted my decision-making. And so I'm not only battling to believe his statements, but most importantly, I'm battling myself on a constant basis. So our first year in a relationship was full of me being constantly in a state of anxiety. And I'm so glad that I was deep in therapy during this time period because I don't know how I would have made it out, out without it because the anxiety became so disabling. It was truly Everything he would say for a year, I'm not even kidding. Everything he would say for a year, didn't believe him. Had questions, not sure. <laughs> and I didn't always tell him that I was battling these feelings. Oftentimes I called my sister <laughs> and I know she got tired of me our first year of dating because I would say, hey girl, he said he's doing this or that he went here or that he's gonna be here. And that this, this, this person that called and the entire time I'm telling my sister, I don't believe him. 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 And she's like, have you caught him lying yet? And I said, no, I have never caught this man lying. He hasn't lied to, to my knowledge before. And she's like, then you need to trust that. I said, but I don't trust that. And I don't trust that because in previous years, I've trusted that and come to find out this person was a liar, a cheater, a scammer, and, you know, was a complete fraud. And she said, but that's not who Marvin is. And that's what she would have to say, but that's not who Marvin is though. So what I was doing is I was constantly comparing, constantly comparing, 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 comparing. Is this person that I'm with right now, like the person I was with last time or the person I was with the time before, the person that I was with time before. It's that comparison game. And my sister and my therapist had to get me to a point in time in which I stopped comparing every single thing this man does to previous relationships. And it sucks because that person truly is being penalized for the previous actions of someone they don't know, someone that they've never spoken to, someone that was completely different from who they are and they're being penalized for the actions of someone else. 
And I had to battle with constantly not only feeling anxious, but feeling guilty that I don't trust him or feeling guilty that I don't believe what he's saying. And it took a long time to get past that. And I think there was one time in which the camel kind of broke its back, the straw that broke the camel's back. I think it was the end of 2021 or was it 2020? I don't remember the year. It was, it was still within one year of us dating, but it was towards the end of that year. And we were at dinner. I think we're at Ruth Chris, if I'm not mistaken. And he gets a phone call. His phone is sitting upward and he gets a phone call and it says cat. It's so a phone call from cat. Mind you, it's like nine 30. <laughs> so I'm sitting there thinking to myself, who the heck is cat calling him at nine 30 at night? And he leaves, he goes to the bathroom. He leaves his phone there, but after cat calls, he doesn't answer. He just, you know, ignores it. And we go back to eating our food. He goes to the bathroom and I text my sister. <laughs> I said, some girl named cat just called him at nine 30 at night. Like, should I ask him about it? She's like, don't ask him about it. Leave it alone. Sure. It's somebody he knows that he's cool with. And I said, but I think that in my mind, just start speculating coming up with all these reasons on why this cat person, who this cat person could be <laughs> so much. So hopefully you won't listen to this episode so much. So that I go through his Instagram followers and I'm entering cat, 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 trying to see, okay, there's a Catherine, there's a Katie. And I'm like trying to figure out who is this cat person that calls him just completely not trusting. Right. <laughs> So the next day, that next morning, he's like, hey, you know, you've been kind of quiet. And I was like, you know, I got to be honest with you. Someone named Kat called you last night. And I'm just trying to figure out who is that? And is there something you need to tell me? Like, what's going on? They called she, whoever it was, she called you pretty late. And he ends up pulling up his Facebook, a lady named Kat. And come to find out, it's his 80-year-old godmother. <laughs> it's his 80-year-old godmother. And she's in, and she's just, you know, calling to check in on him. And I'm just sitting here like, oh my gosh, she's sitting there a complete embarrassment. And he's just so understanding and kind. He's like, no, it's okay. I understand. I wish you would have said something last night. Cause I would have told you and you know, we could have gotten through it last night. I hate that you've been thinking about it all night. Like I don't, he always told me, don't ever hold anything in. If there's something that you're feeling, just say what it is. I promise you we could talk through it. And I just felt so bad. <laughs> I felt so bad because, you know, when you're dealing with a very genuine, honest person, it sucks when, the, when they feel like they're the bad guy all the time, but they're the bad guy based off of doing absolutely nothing. And that's what the first year of the relationship turned into is me constantly questioning him over things he hasn't done over speculation and over assumption. And that's really, I believe the last time in which I really dealt with deep rooted trust was the cat situation. And after he proved to me that it wasn't anyone random, I started realizing, okay, Deshaun, it's really time to change. Yeah, you've been in therapy. Yeah, you've been doing what you can to work on being better at learning to trust and and understand that his word is his bond. And after that, I really started working on taking even more intentional actions to tell myself that this is not previous relationships. This is not going to be previous relationships. You have to have faith that everything's going to be okay. And the main thing that I did, and it's one of the first things in the lessons, and then we'll take a break in a sec, was every time I said, I don't believe him, I counter, I counteracted that negative thought with a positive thought. But what has he done for you to not believe him? But Deshaunty, you should believe him. But Deshaunty, you should trust him. Every time I would have questions that were negative or things that did not warrant distrust, I would counteract those thoughts with something positive. So what if this doesn't work out? Well, what if this does work out? What if he's lying? What if he's telling the truth? 
What if he's just as bad as the last ones? What if he's not as bad as the last ones? What if he's your soulmate and your person? And what if, what if, what if in a positive response? And that really began to help me because it, I didn't drown in my thoughts for too long because it was almost like I was throwing myself a safety net with that positive counteracted response. And that helped me challenge my negative thoughts. And that's one of the first lessons I want to say about individuals that are interested in finding love after betrayal is to challenge your negative thoughts. They are such a trap. They will leave you in a system of consistent negativity, pessimism. It will leave you in a place that you can't climb out of if you don't fight it now. You have to be able to challenge all your negativity with positivity. And I'll tell you some more lessons right after this break. And welcome back to the episode. We are closing out finding love after betrayal with some lessons. Okay, so the first one was challenging negative thoughts. That's what we talked about before the break. The next one is, of course, you need to be able to be in therapy and counseling. You need to make sure that you're constantly in a system that is a professional system in which you're able to grow. Even if, let's say, therapy is too much, counseling is too much in terms of affordability, there are so many therapists online that have YouTube channels that are able to help you through these free videos that they're able to post online. So there's way there's ways to be able to connect to therapists without having to pay for it. So just know that there's YouTube channels that have awesome therapists, they're relationship experts, and they're able to give you the proper tools to be able to handle some of the distrust that you're experiencing. Then you want communication, open and honest communication with your new partner. Hey, I know I am being irrational right now, but I just need you to reassure me that you're actually where you say you're going to be tomorrow. Like, I just need a little bit of reassurance. I know I'm being irrational. Please forgive me. But I just need a little bit more information because I feel myself dipping into a place in which I don't believe what you're saying. And I know you don't deserve that, but if you could please just be patient with me and help me through this negative and intrusive thought. And if you're dealing with an individual that's genuine, loves you and cares about you and is ready to fight for you, they will communicate with you. But you have to be the first initiator of that communication. Next, you need to make sure that you set realistic expectations. You have to understand that this is not an overnight thing. Oh my gosh. I thought that I'd have a few months of healing when me and him together, that it would take a few months and I would have gotten past all the history of bad betrayals and things that have happened that have made me who I am today. And what I realized is that it didn't take months. It took years. So you want to be realistic and you want to be very patient with yourself and you don't want to guilt yourself into imposter syndrome or guilt yourself into believing I'm not good enough for this person. You are good enough for that person. As long as you're constantly working on improving yourself, you're doing what you need to do, but you just have to make sure that you're very realistic about the process and it's going to take some time, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. I realized that with being in my relationship now, we're at such a beautiful place, but the first year, oh my gosh, it was just tragic. It was tragic and it wasn't tragic because of him. It was tragic because of me and even getting into a point where you start to self-sabotage and I'm tired of being the person that's constantly in a state of anxiety. So it's just all these things that you're experiencing. So you have to push yourself to be very patient with yourself. And finally, you want to lean on your tribe. We talk about this all the time. Lean on the people that you trust, the people that give unbiased opinions. I call my sister because I know she's going to talk to me and have a real conversation with me. And if I'm in the wrong, she's going to tell me that I'm wrong. And she's going to give me a perspective that I need to hear. So you want to make sure that you trust your tribe. All right, y'all, that concludes today's episode of Sour Loss of Sweet Lessons, Finding Love After Betrayal. 
I hope you guys were able to learn from this episode and how to trust again. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like button, and repost this episode onto all of your social media spaces and channels. And if you want to share this with your family, friends, or coworkers, or colleagues, be sure to do that. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Yay Networks.